Hello, everyone, and welcome to another podcast episode of the Hoop Board Visitor Information and Destination Marketing Podcast. I'm Brian Reynolds, and with me is Satya Shahade. Satya, how are you? Doing great, Brian. How are you? Oh, doing great. Doing great, too. So today, uh, and this is funny, uh, Satya has not actually looked at this yet, but today we're going to do a couple website breakdowns. We're going to be looking at the marketing. Oh, oh my. Yeah, no, we're going to be looking at the marketing, the SEO, kind of the visual user experience, and just going to give some thoughts on it and everything of what we think about it. Uh, so, and keep in mind, this is uh, kind of off the top of our head. I went in, I'm going to confess a little bit. I, I gave about five minutes uh, to each website URL, but Satya is going in cold. Uh, so, um, yeah, we're just going to be jumping into three different DMOs, CVB type uh, websites and getting after it. Um, how does that, how do you think of it? What do you think of that, Satya? Uh, that's interesting. I love it. Uh, let's do it. All right, great. Okay, so first one. Okay, three. First off, the three towns I'm going to do: Austin, Texas, Kansas City, and Portland, Oregon. Uh, so first up, I'm going to share my screen here, and let's take a look at AustinTexas.org. And give me a second here. Ooh, uh, this is looking interesting. All right, yeah. Here's above the fold. Okay, we're above the fold here. Visit Austin, um, get away to Austin. So we have a big image up top. I like that. I do like visuals. It's a nice image, uh, land, landscape. Uh, over here we have a global navigation that is a side navigation. Now, this is interesting. I don't know, uh, Satya, if you have any much uh, kind of uh, experience with from user experience of top level navigation where the navigation's all up top versus being on the side. Uh, I did have to dig a little bit to look at this, but what I like about this is they have so much content over here. Like uh, I think I counted like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, uh, 12 kind of. In so imagine having 12, uh, 12 kind of choices up here in the top global navigation and the side navigation is handy for if you have a lot of, a lot of content you have to dig through, it's actually better to have it over here or it's a little bit easier to organize. Um, so yeah and if you if you don't mind uh quickly before you get into navigation i mean uh, i totally i i i did notice that it seems it seems really good that they have at least big font in there it's almost made for uh accessibility first which is great uh but um i almost wished i don't know what you think I almost wish there was a video running on this nice, I mean, the image is great, but I almost wish that there was a video that hooked me in early in into the, into my visit here, um, running in the background. That was just my first impression. I, I didn't want to break your chain of thought, but just wanted to throw it out there. Um, yeah, this is free flow while you're thinking about it stuff. That's great. Yeah. I've seen websites that do that. Like something like people experiencing Austin, like uh, like downtown maybe or whatever there is to do in like a, like a, like some sort of musical experience uh, like not playing but you see people experiencing uh, Austin like a video that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, it could be anything. I mean, these uh, the DMO marketers really know what their destination and what to highlight. It could be the nightlife. It could be uh, the restaurant um, areas. It could be some of the key attractions. Uh, I just want, I just want lively people, uh, you know, going around and this, this image, I feel like it doesn't do justice to the vibrancy of uh, Austin uh, mm -hmm. as a city. Um, but maybe this is part of one of their AB tests. We, we have no way to tell, but that was my first impression. Sorry again, if this was a tangent. <laughs> Um, no, no, that's but, what we're here to do. Uh, do a little tear down breakdown. We do like, I do like the, um, atmospherics of it. Um, I do want to check over here. Let's check the global nav, uh, common plan of trip. So itinerary type stuff, places to stay, tourism, things to do. So that's good. Um, this is a very common uh, thing. Things to do is usually a, uh, a good um, kind of global topic. Music scene, you know, uh, Austin is big on music. So let's click on things to do. Okay, good. So it has its own subfolder up here. So we have main uh, domain yep. subfolder. So anything that there's things to do, I would I like to see kind of live within the things to do subfolder. So if I click on attractions, good. 
okay, so attractions is within, so or, from an organizational SEO standpoint, uh, that uh, the things to do uh, lives within the things to do uh, folder in the. Yeah, I was gonna say, um, I was gonna say you were, you definitely put your SEO hat on there and uh, it's, I, I, I like the organization myself. It's, it's very, you know, it's more or less standard, but at the same time, that's what people are used to as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, back to SEO real quick on my end, I'm in kind of an SEO mood here. Let's take a look at their kind of, uh, uh, what is the primary keyword phrase here? Austin attractions, music venue, m museums, and okay, so not bad. It does say optimal, but I that that pretty much uh, covers it. Uh, I mean, obviously there might be room for this, having the word Texas in there, TX maybe, even though this whole website is dedicated to Austin, Texas, but that's picking nits. Um, I would like to see a canonical tag. Um, that is best practices, and we can use more space of their meta description to to figure out that. Um, don't know about text to HTML ratio. I'm gonna have to look at uh, run this through SEMrush real quick. But before we do that, uh, visually, what do you think here? What do you, what, any kind of gut reactions visually? I, what you here? I have I have lots of uh, things that I like that I wanted to, if you don't mind, um, get into visually. If you go back to the home page. Uh, and is that the homepage uh, you were seeing? Because I was seeing completely different homepage, which is uh, this homepage. Uh, no, this is this is what I was seeing exactly. So uh, I I like the fact that they have opted in for um, essentially a very clean uh, layout. The design is. Um, non-standard, it's great, the logo in the middle. Uh, again, we talked about the menu, it's not like the standard menu. Uh, it can throw people off um, because, you know, people are still just used to have having the logo on the left, the menu on the top, uh, but a lot of, I know this is a Simple View website and a lot of the Simple View websites follow this pattern, which is, uh, which is uh, just fine. As long as, as long as it can be uh, found very easily, um, I think what I like in the menu, as I, I mentioned this earlier, is uh, just the uh, the font size and and the clarity uh, that they have used. I I think if you go back to the menu, Brian, I think it could have been even more spaced out. Uh, you know, uh, I I like that they are all. I, I don't know if I like it. Um, these are all in caps. Uh, you know, maybe maybe you could argue uh, this could be a design discussion whether they should be all caps or not. But I definitely think they could be a little bit more spaced out. Uh, just so I'm I'm a little ADD myself. I think so at least self-diagnosed. Um, <laughs> but but. Uh, someone like me does get a little, uh, little lost when it comes to something like this. Um, yeah, I, but I hear you on the caps. Like caps point out. On the caps other hand, right. the utility of the menu is just, I think, I think it's really good. I can go down into each section and then I get, a, I, in some cases, a bunch of options. Again, that can throw me off. <laughs> Uh, but the utility is good. I, I don't think I can get lost too much on this website, which is which is a good thing. Yeah, yeah, that home is always there. I will say there is a lot of content that they are um, navigating here, and they that was that's a tall order. They've had to navigate a lot of content and organize it right. in a way that is uh, meaningful, useful, and like you said, we don't get lost. Um, I mean, yeah, they, I mean, when, anytime you're dividing up content on a website, you do have to ask like, what are the big kind of folders we want to have? And you will see a lot of DMO and CBB things to do is usually always there events. Um, Austin, Texas is obviously a big music uh, city. So they have a special one for music scene. I, I would imagine Nashville will probably have something like that. I would imagine ne Memphis, uh, probably uh, LA maybe. Um, and others, other towns that maybe are not big music scenes. Uh, they probably would leave that out. Uh, yeah, places to stay. As we know, that tourism uh, hotels are a big part of uh, these websites. So, 
yeah, this is all, I like what you said about the caps, all caps. It is kind of, I was wondering what was kind of off. And whenever you see all caps in like an email or Slack or chat room, you're like, oh, why is someone yelling at me? Don't yell at me. But it, yeah, yeah it, it does. It, yeah, I got sad, not really big on that feeling, but it works. I mean, obviously it works, but there's room, there might be room for improvement there. Um, yeah. So a lot of. Oh, what, what's your thought about the gray? Um, there's a lot of gray on here. Um, what's, you know, again, they, I'm sure they have a very specific purpose for the colors they use. Uh, I'm trying to think how it's perceived by someone who does not know Austin and what to make of it. I, I'm, I'm, again, it looks great. I just, I'm not sure what to make of it. Oh, of this gray over here, like this faded whenever you click over here. So it focused more on yeah. this right All here. All the way from the logo down to the text to even, even this overlay that is on there. Um, yeah. Again, for, uh, I think we should remind our uh, listeners uh, this has all been recorded as a video so they can find this on YouTube. Is that correct? Or... Yeah, well, this video will be on YouTube and, uh, yeah, we'll put, we'll post a link to this website as well and the description of our YouTube video. So you can take a look yourself if you want and give feedback. Um, the gray, I mean, yeah, if they're going to do this overlay thing, uh, a free, a visitor's guide, any kind of guide is normally, uh, best practices. They got to have a, some sort of thing with the email to people. So, you can pick up contact information. Um, this is an interesting way to, so you have like a faded area, which highlights, I gotta say these kind of, they're good. I just, I don't know if they can pop a little bit more. They seem like they're faded into that gray a little bit. Um, I might, because, oh, you can see here, look at the side, see there's, yeah, that red kind of border yeah. and it's a gray yeah. border now, so it gets lost. That's kind of, that's kind of messing me up a little bit. Yeah, and this is uh, obviously colors are extremely subjective topic. Um, I am personally a big fan of bright uh, colors, uh, especially in case of Austin. Um, I, given their uh, you know affinity to South by Southwest and um, the fact that they are so well aligned, I just imagined. Um, a, a brighter color when it came to Austin, Texas. Uh, and that's, that's what kind of hit me. Again, I might get used to this and I think it's very utilitarian. Like I think I can get things done on this website, which is very important as well, especially if I was a meeting planner or um, somebody in the travel industry itself, I know exactly what to go, go there for and find things um, and, then, and then get stuff done. Yeah. Okay. Uh, while you're, well, while you were doing that, I just ran a, you're talking about kind of a subjective topic. Here's something that is objective. I just ran the website through, uh, Google's page speed insights. I'm going to share that now. Let's see here. There we go. Uh, and it did not score well, uh, six. So on mobile, uh, in terms of speed to view on this is not optimized for mobile in terms of page speed at this point uh google is scoring it and look at, and look at all this um they recommend uh off screen that's the images there they opted for a big visual experience with the images but with that comes a cost of page load of uh, uh, page speed and loading uh and so with that you know we need to probably do some compression with some imagery to get that speed going again. <laughs> because a six, that is not good for mobile. I think, um, I think, I mean, I think our website at hootboard.com, it, it um, does better than this, better than six, I hope. Uh, you is. know, otherwise yes. I, we should have a conversation with our tech guys, but <laughs> mobile is definitely important. And I think, I think, again, mobile is important. This is where we go to, a, a little bit of plug-in for plug for Hootboard there. It is hard to get the websites running uh, well, you know, on mobile. Uh, and that's where, when we talk about, you know, in-destination visitor information, doing it through a demo's website is much harder. That's where like something like kiosk and getting it in front of them kind of makes sense. But this is not about Hootboard, I think. I think the feedback here is obviously that that speed, the page speed definitely needs to account well and Google definitely looks at it. Oh yeah, mobile first, mobile first, okay. 
and before we move to the next one, I think it's about 10 good minutes on that. Before, let's just take a, one last look here. Let's take a look at um, the domain overview here. I was, uh, let's see how they're doing with all this. Perhaps there's some humble pie anyways, uh, because if they can have all those things going, yeah, look at those organic, wow. <laughs> they're doing very well though. Even with uh, maybe a, a, a issues with page load speed, if people are bouncing, then they need to take a look at that uh, kind of load speed. But look at that, wow. Look at their keyword trends for ranking. They've had a spike back in 2015 and it's been a steady growth pattern ever since with all oh, keywords. Awesome. Yeah, but let's just stop, focus on top 10 keywords. Just a steady growth pattern. There's a nice spike back here in September 2015 few drops, but upward, here's a, another one spikes up 2020, it might be database related. Well, if, in the, in, okay, look at this, as of this month, 2021, they have over 13,000 keyword phrases in the top 10 and 4,300 awesome. in the top three. So they're doing, they're doing something right. Um, I mean, look at this, rank number one for Austin, Texas bourbon distillery. And take a look at that URL there. So it's org slash Austin Insiders blog. So this is a blog post, post slash distillery roundup. So if it's distillery roundup, I'm guessing that is some sort of best top comparison distillery. Yeah, 14 best. There you go, best. That's what we call a roundup. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, when you have a, a roundup, compare, review, usually the word best and top is somewhere nearby in terms of keywords. Um, but yeah, so they are... So, in terms of Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, I was just wondering, how do you want to summarize this? I know you were in that last last thought there, so I, I, why don't you finish that? And well, uh, I will say that what we were looking at initially, we are within the. So let's look at where we're at. We're at Austin Insider Blog. Where does that live over here? Is that is that here? Um... You uh, you mean on the menu? Uh, yeah. Right? Does it, yeah, does this exist on the main menu here or I'm not seeing it? Ooh, okay. you cannot see the block things to do. Uh, I, th I, I don't know if it's, yeah, that should have been, you can that's, go, that should have been there somewhere. How does? Ooh, that's a good catch. Yeah, huh. And, and keep in mind that uh, for anyone watching or listening, yeah, we're, we're, this is still kind of a, uh, uh, you know, we're spending, this is real time reaction to us uh, using this. So, I'm not, yeah, I'm not seeing it at this point. So this exists, uh, I'm sure there's gotta be a link to it somewhere on the main page or somewhere, because I don't think this would be, this is an orphan page, uh, clearly not. Yeah, they did, uh, like they ranked number one. Look at these one, one rankings, that one. Um, uh, South areas, things to do in Austin, visit, when visiting Austin. Yeah, things to do, wow, I think their things to do is perfect. That is a one, number one ranking. Um, so I will say my overall feeling roundup discussion is, uh, yeah, the content is organized at least in folders. Well, um, their blog, that, that's the thing is I have a love hate relationship with blog uh, kind of situations, because if you look at this, it says the Austin insider blog slash post slash distillery roundup. That word post is not really doing a whole lot in terms of keywords from an SEO perspective. It's just kind of an organizing kind of catch all. Uh, I would expect to maybe uh, this kind of keyword phrase would exist somewhere in a drink, food and drink folder or alcohol, like yeah. nightlife or uh, alcohol, something that has like alcohol related keywords maybe. Uh, but uh, that's not obviously, as you can see, that's not the end all be all because it's ranking number one. Uh, what could happen though, what I like to tell people is, yes, we're doing it well now, but that leaves us vulnerable to someone who wants to compete against for that phrase if they organize it better and write it better. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure how many websites want to compete with Austin, Texas in this format, but uh, you know, the, the, the best practices from my standpoint is I like to organize that a little better. Uh, so yeah, that is my like, phrase. Oh, yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Sorry. Oh, that was it. Well, that I was was say, up. Seems like their SEO is definitely powered more by content, um, more than like SEO best practices, so to speak, which is uh, not obviously a bad thing. Google wants us to create good quality content and that's, that's good. They're obviously doing good there. Um, and uh, at the same time, seems like you are finding good opportunities for them to even take that to the next level. Um, but for that particular link, I don't know how high, higher 
they are going to go because they're already on the top for that. So who cares? Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. They're, they're doing well now for that. And <laughs> yeah, they're doing good. So uh, even with like, I got to say, even with uh, that kind of slower page load, page speed, um, look at all these ones. If they have 4,300, they're doing, obviously doing something very well. They're doing it very well and uh, they're targeting properly. So uh, their SEO team are marketers. Uh, yeah. Looking good. And uh, traffic cost is good. Cool. So let's, let's go ahead and summarize this one, Brian, um, your top three things that you like. Well, I like uh, they have it organized properly in terms of uh, they've made a decision for their folders. The folders are not flat in that they just have a subfolder for everything. They actually have a folder decision and they put everything related to that content within that subfolder. So it's consistent that way and it scores better. Um, I like, uh, I gotta say, I'm becoming a fan of this side navigation. Um, I think 95% of the content uh, websites I've audited, they've all been top level navigation. But dealing with this much content, they've, I think, done a decent job of organizing it. Next up, we have Visit KC, Visit Kansas City, uh, near and dear to my heart. I live in Lawrence, Kansas. I actually lived in Kansas City for a little while. So uh, here we are taking a look at Visit KC. Uh, so, and, and, and I hear uh, this week you guys are competing for which one is going to be the coldest in the South, right? <laughs> yeah, if you're at the time of us filming this, it is uh, February 18th, and this is the week of the deep freeze where all of Texas was frozen. And uh, yeah, the power outages, the rolling power outages, uh, minus eight degrees here in Lawrence. So yeah, it is. Uh, it, it, one of my favorite memes was someone shared it on Facebook where it showed like the two sides of America all warm and then frozen in the middle. And the caption was, when you take the first bite of your hot pocket out of a microwave. It's like, oh yeah, it's on the inside. Yeah. <laughs> it's either that or lava hot. So, okay. Um, so here we are, first impressions here. Um, we have uh, another big visual experience. Uh, I don't know, Satya, what are your initial reactions here? Yeah, I can, I can go in, all right. I um, visually and UX wise, I like what I see, the first impression. Um, couple couple of things I noticed, right? The, the big copy here in the middle, the buck stop here, um, the buck stops here, the all new museum experience. No, the I don't even know what it is. Uh, it's a Truman Drive Library and Museum to Unveil. I, I didn't even know this was happening. I had definitely not kept up with it. But the fact that they're using a presidential phase and the phrase and just kind of plugging it in as the as the statement for their uh, city i think i think it's a it's a brilliant idea uh, even if it's probably not going to be their permanent message here um because the thing is opening i guess this year they are putting it in but that's great i think i think it's a it's a good idea to do that yeah. uh, what i really like navigation wise uh is I have my call to actions right on the top. This is something I missed in Austin. There was there were no real call to actions, but here I see one, start planning your visit. I, I know that's what I can do. Uh, the other two things I see right at the top is one for visitors, one for meetings. So that it's, it acts, acts like a tab. And if I'm an event organizer, I know I have to go to the meetings tab. I don't care about the visitors tab as much. Yeah. I can just switch and presumably I get a completely different experience from a meeting organizer standpoint, ex uh, which is exactly what is true. It, it shows a convention center, uh, a meeting space, and now uh, the call to action says, hey, see how... KC can help organize your meeting. So those call to actions are extremely clear um, and gets me started, which is exactly what I would want if I was a visitor or a meeting organizer. So I think kudos on that front. Somehow I also like the menu that is visible. Again, contrasting against the previous one, which was Austin. The menu up here uh, does Give me a quick idea of what things I want to do, but I think beyond the call to actions, it's just it's just I think kind of better than uh, you know I, I I don't think it can get any better in terms of the clarity of call to actions here. Yeah, uh, 
Yeah, the top ne nebu menu, it's quite small. Um, I like, and uh, it is all caps too. I don't know if this all caps, if it's just a font uh, or typeface dis uh, decision or not, but um, something about it's a little bit, I had to zoom in if I want to get a <laughs> really good look at it. Um, but yeah, the top level navigation is uh, organized what in a way I would expect. Take a look at this, the start planning your visit. If you look down on the lower left-hand corner over here when I hover over it, you'll see this exists in a sponsored folder. So I'm guessing this is a sponsorship deal with the museum to promote their uh, Truman Library. I believe the buck stops here. That was his famous, I think uh, was his famous thing he put on the presidential desk. Uh, never the decisions like, uh, basically every decision stops with him <laughs> so or yeah. whatever so I guess that means he can't really blame anyone he has to blame himself for something along those lines um, I let me take a look at these for from an SEO perspective uh, meeting spaces yeah look at this it's kind of repeated here um, this is meeting see how you fit see how you fit Kansas City hmm. meeting spaces in Kansas City okay that lives okay that lives within this meeting so that is a little bit of a See. Okay, where are we at? We're visitors, events. Yeah, yeah the menu the menu is changing for visitors versus oh, meetings. Got they it. have Look two different menus. So so that's that's what I mentioned. Is like they uh, they have it tailored towards their two uh, two audiences. You literally need to click into meetings and then go to that side of the page or yeah. the website, yeah. and then it just kind of gives. Okay, I yeah. missed that. I mean, let me look visitors. <laughs> I mean, which also points out it could be confusing to some users, but why not? Yeah. Um, see, if I look at deals, this kind of breaks my heart a little bit. This is, if I click on deals, look at the URL, I'm going to complete subdomain, checkout slash 290 slash visit KC. The, that, is, that is a decision right there. Um, I mean, I guess it's one of those things, if this is not really meant to be an SEO landing page of any kind, uh, they try to make it look the same. Uh, but yeah, look at this. It's just uh, spend more, see more, spend less. I like the idea of having a deals tab or some sort on the website. I don't think I saw that in the Austin, Texas uh, global navigation where they have like coupons. I think they're, they're trying to get people to download this pass, which is why they have it on a different site or something. M must okay. be some, some different product that they are pointing to and that's why that subdomain so it's not even a website, it's probably a product that they're pointing to. I'm not aware of this product, but it seems interesting. We can take a look into that later. Okay. Uh, and maybe we'll talk to them at some point. Um, yeah, looking good. So the main page, we have book hotel. We have a, a start planning your visit. So an itinerary, uh, discover key in Kansas City, interactive maps here. We have a hashtag, how we do Kansas City. A lot of visuals, a lot of visual stuff going on here. Um, and I like, I think it's organized nicely. I do like how it's divided up and, um, let me see here. Um, let me see if they've done anything in their SEO title. Let's see here, Kansas city tourism, their title tag. I'm reading their title tag, Kansas city tourism pipe, visit KC pipe Midwest things to do comma hotels and restaurants in K Kansas KS slash Mo. Okay, that's a very long title tag. Uh, we need to tighten that up a little bit. Um, you know, uh, this will be this will probably truncate in the search engine results page around here, so they won't even see this part of it. Around around things to do for our listeners. Yeah, things yeah. to do. Yeah, for listen, if you're listening, uh, about yeah, seventy characters in our five hundred and sixty-five pixel lengths um, around the things to do. So everything after things to do is hotels and restaurants in Kansas, KS and Mo. Uh, that will be completely lost. Uh, so I would want to tighten this up a little bit. Um, and uh, kind of the exact opposite for the meta description at this point, it's 154 characters. I think we can add some more. There's more real estate there we can take advantage of uh, as well. Uh, let's see here, headings are, uh, they're fine. Uh, H1 tag is the buck stops here, an all new museum experience. Uh, I mean, if it's the home page, I'd like to see something Kansas City related, but I see that they're doing a partnership deal, so that's okay. So this actually last time, there was the alt tags, the imagery, they didn't have their alt tags and their images. Uh, that's completely missing on this page, so they might want to go back through and, and do something with that. So in terms of SEO uh, kind of meta markup, 
I'd say tighten up the title tag. And if they're doing it there, let me just do a quick, another check. Let me just see uh, things to do attractions. If they're doing on their homepage, I'm guessing they're probably gonna, that's probably gonna happen as well on their internal pages that have more landing. Oh no, they're, this is better. See, as they're in their attractions page, uh, this is a little bit more um, tight and yeah what to do in kansas city i love it i i think i think google appreciates more honest title tags uh, i'm not a seo expert as you are brian but i think i think generally speaking at least for our site at hoodboard they have rewarded us more often than not for just an honest text you know you know what i mean sorry yeah, for I'm those being yeah, I don't think they're misleading anyone here. And I do, yeah, it's good to, it, there's a comment, there's like a happy medium between being too descriptive in the title and, and being too vague or not descriptive enough. Um, I mean, even with this title tag, I mean, look at this. This is where I get a kind of little, little cringy. Like we talked about like how this is divided up into visitors and meetings. You go to visitors and then you go down to things to do. So we're in visitkc.com slash visitors slash things do slash attractions. Then we're getting kind of deep, which is not entirely that bad. Uh, and they decided, they made a decision to divide up content that way. But now everything that's attractions related, for example, the, like, let's say it's Worlds of Fun, which is the theme park here, or Oceans of Fun, which is the water theme park, or attractions like uh, anything along those lines, then that would need like a space, and that would write in like Worlds of Fun kind of thing. And that's when we start to get a really long um, URL. Yeah. and uh, it gets a little bit too long we try to keep it within a hundred characters if you uh, as ideal um so i think you'd still be fine um i think again we can't we can't tell what they're trying to achieve but i think they're trying to get that things to do in kansas city kind of traffic you know like those those terms tend to be very common uh based on this that's what they're trying to do which is which is not which is not a bad thing to try to achieve obviously if they can do that for, yeah for sure yeah and yeah and that's a good point too like it's in kansas city and you saw on the main the page title tag they said both kansas and missouri so they're they're covering two they're, they're kind of covering two different kansas cities there um though i think most of the fun stuff is in kansas city missouri um but they want to also let people know there's a kansas city kansas that's awesome that's awesome um yeah. So visitors, uh, places to eat. I'm, take, I'm taking a look at the food and drink, the eat and drink area here. Uh, this is also visitors. Uh, this is see, this is a little bit better, I guess. Uh, visitor slash places to eat, places to eat. Places to eat, yeah, yep. And, yeah. and then they can go directly into each one of these. I mean, they could potentially again do like things like comfort food and breweries and this that like so that could add another subcategory level, but that's fine. I, yeah. I think these are fine though. I'm not. I mean, my thought is it organizes things. I'm just excited that they started out with those visitors and meetings right at the top because it just gives clear navigation both to humans and robots from Google's end that they know exactly what to do. I don't know how Google treats um, this top level menu for visitors and meetings and then go from there. I think that's what is driving that extra layer that you seem to be a little concerned well, about yeah but, that's the, yeah go ahead go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no i was gonna say i mean that's that that does make a lot of sense for what they're trying to achieve though um so i'm always a fan of doing seo when it also makes sense for the users who are actually visiting the site um but that's because i'm a more ux heavy um you know hard process person Right. Yeah, no, I, I hear what you're saying. And that's always kind of the back and forth with you, SEO. And, and then you throw in a visual user experience into the mix and we got ourselves a back and forth between everyone. Um, I, it's, here's what's going to happen. So visitors up here, if you look at where we're at, um, that, that is the default for the main page, the domain meetings, is it's a, it's a subfolder uh, category page. So meetings, it's a category, but visitors does not appear right there. It happens when you come down and click on the uh, subfolders within the category. And uh, so the, the category uh, is visitors with an eat and drink. So then it appears, but I don't think visitors has its own page that I'm aware of. Uh, so, so getting it to crawl top level and find its way here. I'll be curious. I want to run this through SEMrush. Is that okay real quick? Totally, totally. 
let's see what, what happens when I run it through. Uh, and, and while you do that, while it's running its report, what do you think about the the images? The what's your what's images on the site? The or, or just the general design apart from the UX? We talked a lot about UX and how I like it. Uh, what about the design and? Um, I like, uh, I'm a big fan of cityscape photos. I like, I like, I actually have this photo when I lived downtown, I lived in a building just beyond that building. It was called 909 Walnut and I have some great, actually I have a, let me see if I have it here. My background, <laughs> let's see if I can, the, uh, the, uh, I have a really great background photo of that. Uh, I'll do it later. Um, so imagery. Yeah. I like cityscape. Yes. Uh, I like uh, shows here, the cool stuff. Uh, the sports, uh, Kansas City is big on the sports. Uh, they lost in the Super Bowl this year a few weeks ago, uh, but they're highlighting sports. Uh, so basically, whenever they think of Kansas City, pretty much any dis any discussion uh, that is tourist-related, barbecue pretty much always comes up. Um, I, I just, I, I have been itching to say this uh, ever since I landed on the website, but I just feel like they lost the opportunity to really wow with the images. Uh, the first one for the library, the upcoming library is definitely wide and nice, uh, but I don't see why they could have not done that for the rest of the website, right? The, the website is still in the 90s, kind of 800 pixel width mode, um, and, then, and then they're wasting all this space on the left and the right uh, which could have been if they used a progressive design, progressive website design capability, they could have made that uh, or used that area, especially for large screens. And then it could also fall in place on mobile phones, um, you know, in, in terms of uh, uh, smaller things. We haven't talked about mobile yet, but I feel like they, they, they missed out a design opportunity here. They may, they might be, constrained by the template or the the tool they're using this doesn't seem like either simple view or uh, one of the tempest ones but i could be wrong um, but it seems like they, they missed an opportunity there did you see that the last three times i was trying to use the global navigation that kept on hiding from me look at that i'm trying to use it it scrolls with me yeah. it's sticky and it goes away look at this where are you at yeah, meaning they're trying to maximize the vertical space, but they're missing out on the, the left and the right. So instead of worrying too much about like that, that hiding menu, they should have just used the space on the left and the right. Now, the second section here, here, look at this. This looks great. This looks great. This is where, uh, just for our listeners, let me explain what I'm looking at. Is on the, In the visitor section, it's below the fold. It's uh, around the region. It's around the region. There's like a whole header image. That's fine. I'm not a fan of those. But uh, once you go down that, there's a nice collage of all the images from Austin. These look beautiful. Um, They're big. And I, why is this not right on the homepage? Why did I not see this um, till like 15 minutes into the... <laughs> In, into the teardown, right? Into into this audit. So I, I wish they brought this out in the front because this really gives me a nice image of what to see and what to find in Kansas City and especially as a as a casual visitor. Right. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I share your sentiment there. This would this would really pop on the homepage. Um, I will say I'm not enthusiastic about the imagery. This looks pretty like blocky, like JPEG. Uh, that's my favorite saying on designer on Reddit is this needs more JPEG. Like it's pretty blurry. Um, doesn't really look very crisp like this. If you look, uh, I mean, it looks like uh, just not the right yeah, image for this size. Uh, this is better. Like this is a close up kind of crisp shot of uh, the, uh, that is where the, the symphony performs at. Yeah, it seems like they're over optimized for performance and under optimized for the visuals yeah uh, look, look here not all images are that bad not all images are that bad to be fair um uh, some some are pretty good um uh, but that particular one the country club plaza you were pointing at those were a little bit uh oh. green oh, look over here kansas city look around the letters look how blurry it is around the letters there that's very ch jpeggy um so they might be trying to optimize for page load speed uh well 
take a look at that here in a little, in a little bit. Yeah. Let me let me check Samrush and see what's going on with uh, their rankings. Um, well, they have yeah, they have good rankings here as well. They have uh, let's see here thirty two hundred in the top three, uh, almost seventy five hundred uh, in the top four through ten. So a total of over ten thousand keywords in the top ten, um, and probably the. Uh, see here, nightclubs, Kansas City, Missouri, Kansas City, Mo. That that exists in a things to do. Okay, so yeah, I mean, and the, the question you asked earlier was, uh, how's Google crawling this? Is it going to be good? Yeah, it looks like it, Google's finding its way to this content just fine. Um, even with a deep URL, uh, they are, I mean, the one, two, three, four. Yeah, it's fine. It's fine. Um, yeah, and you're just to, again, uh, just to not lose sight of our uh, uh, listeners, we are looking at SEM Rush, which is a tool for um, SEO, and then uh, we are analyzing some of the top links. And so th these are pretty deep ones. These are pretty deep categories, which is uh, which is great that they are, you know they are getting Google to get go all the way down. And in some ways, Google likes that too. So yeah, uh, I, exactly. Thing. Exactly right. Yeah. So this is the kind of this kind of gives you an idea of content strategy where you get very specific with your content strategy. So you get more broad with visitors and things to do. And then they have arts and culture and everything that's arts and culture related. You put it in that in that subfolder. Uh, everything that is family friendly, fun things for kids, things to do, fun things for kids or families. You put everything that's family friendly into one folder and you organize it that way. And that gives you this kind of experience where it's divided up nicely. And uh, yeah. It's scored. Uh, if you put all, if you put uh, too much on one page, uh, then you know it kind of. There's not really a target there. Uh, it gets cool. kind of lost. So yeah, they are looking good. Um, I, I, Brian, let's uh, let's go top three things. Top three things you like. Uh, I am a fan of. I think they did a, a decent job with the way they're dividing up the content. Um, though I will, I'll, I'll hold my. <laughs> Whenever you have a global navigation, though, that is not going to uh, that, that takes you off the page. That makes me cringe a little bit. I do like uh, they're consistent here with things to do. They've uh, based on SEMrush. I, I like so organization. I liked how they've divided the content and kept it within those folders consistently. Everything eat and drink is within eat and drink. Things to do, same story there. Um, and uh, I like I like the theme overall theme. It's Kansas City. There's the city, the sports, the food. Uh, and over here we got uh, Boulevard Brewing, beer, all the all the things that people need to come take advantage of and look at. So, uh, yeah, this is Kansas City, um, and I, and I gotta say this uh, up here, this is starting to grow on me a little bit. But uh, I think those are my three favorite things. What about you? Yeah, top uh, top three things I like uh, is definitely the navigation. I think from a UX standpoint. It achieves the purpose. If I was a visitor, I know exactly where to go. If I was planning a meeting, I know exactly where to go. I think I think it's a very very deliberate design on their part, and I think it it works really well. The menu changes based on the context uh, as well, which is I think a really good thing. Um, and I think uh, I think the the content organization, as you said, I I agree. It's extremely good, very clear. Um, I don't know. I I don't think I can get lost on this website, uh, which is which is always a good thing. Uh, in terms of what 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 about things that you think they could improve upon? Um, you would, let me let me give you that chance to talk about. Well, first things first, they got to work on their mobile page speed, page load time. Uh, they have scored a seven and a fifty four. Okay, so their desktop is uh, reasonable. We can work with that but their mobile is a slow seven, uh, according to Google's developer uh, page speed insights. So they need to, uh, they need to do something to break up uh, their, to, to speed up that, that mobile experience or people are not going to stick around and, and use their mobile devices, which as we know is about two thirds of the internet now uses searches on their mobile devices. Uh, last time I checked it was around 60%, 65%, something like that. Uh, so I would like to see that improved. Um, I would like to see deals or this visitor. Uh, I, I wish we could do something different with deals up here in the global nav because that, you know, that says one thing it says, it says down there in the bottom that I'm going to slash deals. But uh, if you look down in the lower left hand corner, it says that's a, that's a folder, but then I go to a subdomain. I don't like that. Uh, and, um, 
And uh, yeah, I, th I think you said it, uh, in terms of a visual experience, uh, I do get a 90s feel when you get down here. So if we can maybe modernize how that looks and maybe update the images with more high definition. But at the same time, you need to make sure the high definition or the better visualization does not slow you down because we're already running at a six, a score of six on mobile. Um, so yeah, that's me for things to improve on. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I think I think for me, uh, we, yes, absolutely. The, there's a design opportunity. Uh, it, it is the site is ex highly utilitarian to the almost to a fault where it looks like a corporate website. And yes, if I was just a meeting planner, that would be great. But if I am a visitor, um, I'm going to feel like I'm working and not planning for my next trip. Uh, and you don't want to give them that 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 experience. So that's one thing. Uh, again, talking about this width issue, I just think it's a huge lost opportunity to not have the entire width of a browser user's browser being used. I, I know a lot of people um, might be using it on their mobile phone or um, a tablet, but um, there are always people doing it on a web browser and you don't want to miss that opportunity at all. Uh, and then, and then I think, um, I think, I think that's really it. I don't have a whole lot of other things except for maybe the, um, the quality of images uh, on the main side, but I think they have that one, one uh, area which we found uh, somewhere on the website, uh, which had the nice collage and those images were great, except for a couple of grainy ones there. Uh, yeah. But I, I think that's something that's easily doable. And that's a good point. That just popped on. I was, I, I was, you really made me think of one more thing too. Imagery. I mean, I don't see any people here. I just see a bunch of things. I would like to see some people enjoying themselves. And that kind of imagery would help a lot. Yeah, that's a good point. That was my, my feedback for uh, Austin. And I would agree, like, uh, show me people having fun. Um, I think show me some locals too, especially especially for people uh, coming in from, you know, the, the coasts and stuff, like show me something cultural, show me lots of good food and people yeah, eating. family here. Yeah. Lots of good food. So, yeah. All right. All right. That's visit KC overall, overall pretty good. And I mean, the, the proof is in the pudding. Their uh, keyword phrases uh, have been growing and they've been doing really well. So uh, I'm, I'm sure they're doing great, but those are just a couple of thoughts that we had. Uh, and keep in mind, this is off the top of the head, uh, kind of, this, an, this is not exactly a deep dive. This is an eyeball audit. <laughs> we'll call it many different things. All right. Um, and for the next one and last one for today, let's take a look at travel Portland, uh, Portland, Oregon. And a little bit different uh, than, so we had Austin and then we had Kansas City and now we are in Portland. Um, hmm. This one has a little bit of an older feel too, wouldn't you say? Yeah, um, I mean, I, I'm, again, I, 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 I feel sad that they missed out the, the left and right opportunity, the, the just the wasted, uh, you know, uh, real estate on the page. Um, when people do like these 800 uh, pixel or 1200 pixel websites, I think I think they are just missing out on the large browsers and you know what can be done there. Uh, and technology already exists with responsive websites to be able to just fill the page and immerse people into that experience of whatever they are trying to do. Uh, so I think I think that should have been done uh, upfront. I, the other thing is, I think navigation's pretty straightforward. I, I, I'm not going to complain one way or the other. I think it's really good. I think I understand it opens up into nice, nice little helpful, so nice. Uh, yeah, in good. helpful menus. The menus are really good because then it gives me a sense with the image there. So that's definitely good. Uh, for listeners on the podcast, basically, when when I click on a menu item, it opens like a very like a full looking model with you know Just links as well as a, as a primary image and a call to action, right? Uh, yeah, so that drop down menu has a whole. I don't think I've seen that many times. Like where the drop down menu has uh, an image on the left, and so I'm, I clicked on culture. We clicked. Uh, there's an image of like a restaurant patio with people eating. And then on the right side is where it would go to from arts, beer, biking, food, music, nightlife, 
outdoor sports. So yeah, that's, oh, hey, weird. Uh, okay. <laughs> this is Portland, Oregon. They have a, they have a whole section called weird. <laughs> Sounds like something, uh, Austin, Texas. Isn't like a fra- funny phrase, like keep Austin weird or something. This- I'm pretty sure Portland has its own weird too. So I'm, I'm glad they're honest about yeah. it. Oh, that's Excuse awesome. Me. That's, that's great. Awesome. I love it. Yeah, even that image right there. <laughs> Look at that. That's hilarious. Um, explain to our Brian. I'll give you the honors. Explain to our <laughs> listeners nope. what this image is. Well, I clicked on the weird uh, tab, and uh, it's a very happy human uh, wearing. Is that a swan hat or a flamingo? That's a flamingo hat. Uh, at first I was confused, but I realized that's a flamingo and a mask and they're smiling and waving, uh, all pink all the time. I think they're pushing a stroller with flowers in it and they are, it is a, okay. So if you're a photographer, I think this is what we call a 50 millimeter lens where it's focused on the main subject. Uh, it's very bright and forward and in the background it's blurry. So that person in the front wearing bright colors, uh, really pops, really just kind of almost jumps out of the screen of your their desktop at you. That's why I jumped like, oh, this, this is yeah, a very... It seems, yeah, it seems like a, uh, like a Mardi Gras uh, up in the West, uh, but with a much more adult active person. Uh, I, just, I just love her <laughs> energy. Um, I just love... Um, yeah. yeah let's have fun. fun. We like to see fun. That's what we like to see. So, oh my gosh, look at all this. So, yeah, this is a, a place that's really highlighting the unique personality of the area. Uh, the uh, Portland's weirdest events. Weird. Por- yeah, I love this. I really, actually, I love this. Uh, this is great. Yeah, uh, this is what. And makes this it is unique. something we mentioned about Austin in some ways. Is we miss that. Like we want to see the 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 unique aspects that off a city and I'm sure we have those in every city um, but this just wants me wants me to go to Portland and and just find out what the heck this is all about and it's probably nothing but they have done a great job at highlighting some of this so I love the honesty behind that whole page the the Portland weird page um, They're on the beer yeah, page how, now. how can our listeners go to this page because it was very interesting uh, uh, URLs travelportland.com travelportland.com slash weird is that is that uh, hey, let me check it out uh let's see here yeah uh travelportland.com slash uh let me see here okay travelportland.com slash culture slash weird and that'll take you to where we're looking at right now if uh That's if you're listening this was a whole a whole this was a whole interesting rabbit hole that we definitely didn't <laughs> intend to go through. But thanks to Travel Portland, uh, they made us go do this. Which exactly, is- something interesting to take a look at, and 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 kind of get back, getting back to what we're uh, they they have it divided up. This is interesting. They have it divided by neighborhoods and region. Um, we do see the things to do and attractions. That's pretty common here, but we do have neighborhoods. So I clicked on downtown. Um, let me take a look at their keywords. Uh, SEO downtown. Okay. Uh, okay. This is a little bit, uh, this could be filled out a little bit more, make it more um, descriptive. Looks like they're taking full advantage of uh, the meta description. The title tag is what I was talking about earlier. That can be a little bit more um, focused on a primary keyword phrase. Their alt tags and their images, they 13 images without it. So they should get on that. And Oh, I'm I'm kind of torn. It's just um, they need more text. I'm kind of I'm torn on that. Um, I guess it is yeah. kind of light, um, but it's not bad. I mean, it, they're focusing more on I think visual imagery before they do text and uh and okay, yeah, short term rentals. Okay, so the downtown they have like rentals from downtown uh, divided by Airbnb, the Verbo, VRBO, the vacation rentals one, and La Casa. And they have their uh, their social media here, it's Instagram. Yeah, I just feel like every time you're going through this, I just feel like they missed the opportunity to really put design on top and really make this whole thing pop because they have so much good content. Um, they do that. Another thing I noticed, Brian, we haven't talked about in terms of uh, UX a whole lot here. 
but I do notice, um, I do miss clear call to actions. I do miss if, um, what if I was an event organizer? I still haven't figured out on this website, where am I gonna go and start booking, planning my event? Um, you know, uh, that's, I don't think it's clear. I don't even know at this point if Travel Portland is looking to attract event organizers or not. I, I would imagine why not. I, I mean, I imagine why not, but I just don't see it clearly. It's, it seems to be very much more visitor focused rather than meetings focused, uh, which is a disservice to themselves if they are the, the meeting. Um, yeah, look at yeah that. they plan a meeting. So plan, it's under plan. So this is what I would have changed. This is, it's under plan and then meetings. And then the URL goes to travelportland.com slash meetings. I would just do a menu called meetings right at the top. I, I mean, that, that would be my suggestion. That way, if I was a meeting organizer, I know exactly that's where I have to go. And then it brings me to this page. Um, and, then, and then again, separate the visitors out from meeting planners. There are two different audiences. Um, it's just kind of is very helpful. I think mm -hmm. I love um, Visit Kansas City for that. Okay. Yeah, that's good note. I like that. And I like how this meetings, uh, it, it did take a little bit. Let's go back to the homepage and see if we can find it from there. I don't, yeah, if you want to do meetings, then you have to go deep into the global nav. I'm not seeing it here, scanning. Yeah, click, click on plan and it's just, I don't, I don't want to say buried, but it's not exactly highlighted. I mean, I don't think that counts as highlighted, does it? Not, not in my opinion. Well, uh, that, I mean, that kind of meeting should have been a call to action or should have been a direct part of the menu, the top menu, because I think meeting organizers are important for you guys. So, uh, so I think you want to get these meeting organizers, you know, directly going about their business and not have them look around, you know, because yeah. the typical meeting organizer, I, I'm imagining when they're thinking of running their meetings, they are going through like they have maybe shortlisted 10, 12 um, destinations and they're going through their websites uh, and you want to make it easy for them because it's a, it's, it's a slog for some of them. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Um, I do like how they have like incentives up top so they can say how much money you can save. Um, that's, that's good. Um, and you see, are they, and they do are targeting it. They're planning events in Portland. Now that is a key, that is a primary keyword phrase right there. It's not just events slash pipe Portland. It's don't plan your event. What do you want to do? I want to plan an event in Portland. Okay, good. Um, I mean, I am, this is also me being stick. I said this earlier in Austin. Uh, most people would assume Austin, Texas and this page more or less says Portland. Do you assume Oregon? There's a part of me that kind of wishes there was like an OR if there was room for an organ to identify this is Portland, Oregon, not Portland. Yeah, again, for, for our listeners, you are thinking of this from an SEO standpoint. Um, you, they, they are doing a good job there, um, but then it's kind of mixing, I think. Uh, yeah. But SEO might work well for that. Yeah, I think this, I mean, uh, yeah, if you look in here, it just says Portland meetings up top. Um, I don't know how many Portlands there are in... And it should it work itself out because uh, you know all the links pointing to this, all the content talks about Portland, Oregon. So Google will score it that way. I just think it's a, it's a little bit extra if you can be more, a little bit more specific. But at that point, you're still it's still fine. Yeah, um, yeah absolutely. No, awesome, awesome work in terms of just uh, the basics of the website. And I think their SEO. Why don't we check their SEO now? Okay. Uh, if, um, if you I want to get that. back to the home, I'm, I'm very curious of that. All right, let's take a look here, Kansas. Yeah, while, while you pull that up, I do feel like overall the images and, you know, again, we talked about that weird page and we spent a lot of time on that. Um, but overall, on the rest of the website, I think they could have used some interesting images uh, and bigger images. So, ooh, this... Why don't you talk through what you're looking at, Brian, and talk us through, uh, you know, for uh, especially for our listeners. Okay, so I'm looking at SEMrush, and it's going back uh, in terms of total keyword portfolio dating all the way back to January 2012. 
and and they had 2100 uh keywords in the top 10 and that reached its peak in january uh or february of 2018 at 16,000. and sometime in october of 2019 it dropped from having a total around 15,000 total keywords to 10,000 8,000. so now they're staring at uh about 9,500 keywords now uh in their total keyword portfolio as of february 2021 versus 16,000, 15,000 in September. So that is a loss of 7,000 keywords out of their portfolio in the last year. So that is significant. Um, geez, yeah. I'm not sure what happened. That would require a little bit more of a deep dive, but. Yeah, um, yeah, 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 probably a SEO agency can definitely help there. They might have, I, and they might have gone through a legitimate purge in some cases, if the content started going to, you know, non-brand and not onto the storyline, it's sometimes it's legitimate, I think, to do a purge, but it's always sad to see, you know, and it has happened to us in the past, it's sad yeah. to see some rankings go away. Um, but Overall, I think, I mean, they still have, uh, I mean, over the last several years, they have grown reasonably. It's just not consistent. It's a little bit up and down. And uh, I hope they invest uh, some time and energy into finding what's going on here because this could be free traffic uh, as we go along. Now, this is all we are talking for all the three websites we went through today. We were talking about really attracting. They're not doing much. And, and this is true for all three of them. They are not doing much. I believe to keep, excuse me, <clears throat> visitors retained into that once they're at the destination doing that. I think um, on Austin, we saw an itinerary tool, um, not so much in some of these other cases. Um, I believe Kansas, from what I know, does have some kiosks around. They're not necessarily owned by the Tourism Bureau, but um, I don't know what kind of information they put out. Uh, but but kiosks are definitely something that, you know, or they should at least be concerned about the visitor retention and visitor information uh, once the visitors are in the destination because it's just going to be, the, these visitors could be just your free marketing and you don't want to lose out on that. So I like this, by the way. I want to point this out. Uh, this keyword phrase, places to photograph in Portland. I don't think I saw that in the other. If I was a DMO or CBB, I want to check what my search engine traffic is around that and then have a list of places to get your photos taken uh, in your area. So if you are, a, if your website doesn't have that yet and you're a highly uh, visual visual area, that might be a fun uh, kind of uh, content yeah. page. Another one I like is, uh, you know, I know historic tours are usually popular throughout every CBB or DMO, but this one says private tours in Portland, Oregon. So maybe check out your own keyword phrase of your DMO or CBB in the area. See if people are searching for private tours and make a list of those for people searching for that as well. Um, yeah, there's actually kind of unique. Uh, this, this actually points back to the whole stakeholder engagement conversation, which probably, which is definitely another series of podcasts, but finding who are doing some private tours and finding your community, finding your attractions and working with your attractions and getting their information on, which naturally most DMOs do very well, uh, but there is, they, they, it just has to be done so much more. There's like, you know, uh, and, and some DMOs do it better than others, but that's definitely a big part of the job. So that's, I guess, uh, a quick, Parting. Anyways, what well, can we go into the top three? All right. Final one, top three for today for Portland. Um, I like how clean this looks. Uh, the global, nav global navigation is clean and it's smooth. Um, I think they did uh, a, an okay job dividing up content for the most part. Um, so I do like how clean it is, but at some cost, uh, that also comes across as it's kind of, uh, kind of looks like an older website, but it does look clean. So I do like that feeling. I do enjoy the imagery of uh, people experiencing the city or, uh, you know, uh, that's consistent with the uh, kind of, if we're talking about COVID related stuff, here's a person with a mask shows that I do like seeing people using the city and experiencing the city. Here's another individual using that as well. So I like that we've integrated people uh, into the imagery 
Uh, and uh, you know what? And I got to say, I really enjoy, uh, they are staying true to who they are, uh, identifying their culture and what makes their area unique. And I like that they're being honest. We like honesty around here. So uh, yeah, that's yeah. what I, I really enjoy that about this. Yeah, I love, the, I love the culture and uh, I, the weird aspect of it. I feel like they, they haven't done it enough, especially on their homepage. I mean, they, you know, Portland to me is known for, you know, one of the left, in, on the political spectrum at least, um, cities. And I think Portland is proud about it in some ways, but they should then drive that onto their uh, branding to a certain extent. It, does, it doesn't matter where people are coming from on what political spectrum they come from. And it's not about po politics. It's about who, what you stand for. And I think, I think they just haven't worn, worn that uh, enough. And that goes back to like the website just looking a little bit old, plate colors. I think, I think they could just, you know, it's very subdued. Uh, for whatever reason, and I think they could just bring a little bit of that weird right on the right onto the homepage, rather than hiding it under culture. Um, but yeah, I like the weird. I like the weird. Uh, I like the simplicity of the website, uh, and definitely they have um, they have decent SEO, but um, but with opportunities that we talked, and then things. In terms of opportunities, what I think is really just use the entire page. Don't leave those blue, blue um, or whatever color or non-color sides onto a web page. Like the world has moved on, so make your web page wide and fill the whole browser. Uh, you're just wasting a lot of good real estate. Uh, the second thing is again bring the weird out. I think I think it's a missed opportunity, and then. The third and probably the most important for your meeting organizers, I think, give them a clear call to action on where to start so that they can um, they can just go in and do things and, you know. Oh, yeah. Divide up the meetings. That's a good point. Yeah. Let's, let's bring that out yeah. a little bit more. Yeah, and just out there. All right. And for good measure, let's take a look at, real quick before we go. They're a little bit better from our other players in the mobile space. Uh, desktop is probably the best in terms of page speed, page load. Uh, page speed insights, uh, but they're mobile. There's room for improvement there as well. So each one of uh, the websites we've looked at tonight in terms of their mobile experience and load, load time has not been great. So that's a, an action item for all three of them to maybe take a look at and uh, make sure their mobile users are happy and getting the content they need as soon as they can. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Satya, I think that's going to do it for us in this episode of the Hootboard podcast. Uh, that was fun. Thanks for being here and, and uh, helping me uh, get, get through this. It, it was absolute fun. And um, I wonder how many people we put to sleep. But I, I hope if, we, if uh, the guys from Austin, Kansas City, and uh, Portland, Oregon, they, um, you know, when they come across this, it's hopefully it's helpful to them uh, to be able to make some changes and or through their future development on their website. So all the best guys. Thank you much. Until next time, this is the Hoopboard podcast. And until next time, thanks for listening.